Metrolink, light rail, was another hallmark of your time. How did you think about the relationship between light rail and the enormous bus system that webs through the city uh, currently? It's been difficult because, of course, um, we, we experimented, not in London, I hasten to add, but the previous Conservative government uh, experimented with uh, bus uh, deregulation uh, in the 80s, which proved to be an unmitigated disaster, uh, quite frankly. The uh, sit situation here is that it's so deregulated that there are some routes which have what seem like hundreds of buses uh, competing uh, on them. and. Um, they even have races where they try to get to the stop ahead of their, their, their <laughs> rivals. Um, and then other places that are just not served well enough at all. Right. So you need to get some kind of cross-subsidy. What we've done is seen fares increase. We've seen uh, bus mileage travel reduce. Uh, we've seen large parts of Greater Manchester uh, denied access to quality public services. Um, you can't be a successful place if the people who live in that place can't access jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the, the whole question of, of re-regulating bus services was one of the absolute requirements that we each made of government as part of our devolution. And why, why the push towards light rail? What did you, was that making up for what you thought was weakness in the bus sector, or was that something well, specific you thought light rail could do? Light rail had a very specific uh, role. Um, the, uh, the rail network which served Manchester at that time was in badly need of, of reinvestment. Uh, we had two almost independent rail networks, north and south. Mm -hmm. It didn't cross uh, the city centre, didn't penetrate uh, the city centre. We saw light rail uh, as an important platform in modernising our uh, public transport system and at the same time creating the impetus for, for our transformational uh, economic programmes. The trams are, are wonderful. I, I love riding on them and um, they have been extended out to other parts of the city. There is a question about are enough people using them? I did a talk at a school in North Oldham, which is one of the poorest parts of the region, and the children there were rarely getting on the tram and coming into town, and maybe the cost played a part in that because it cost £2.50, which isn't huge, but it might be a barrier. Um, but there was some kind of invisible barrier to it as well, and the head teacher at the school had set up a programme where each term they had a particular task to do, and one of the tasks was that they had to catch the tram and go into the city centre, because otherwise they, they wouldn't do it. But there are other bits of the region where it probably doesn't make any sense to extend the, the trams to, because it would be too costly, they're too far away. You would never get more than the commuter flow, perhaps, on them. But a lot could be done to improve connectivity using the buses. The roads are pretty bad, improve the roads, run more services, make them a little bit more comfortable, put Wi-Fi on the bus so people can use it as they travel and so on. So you, you could, could get a lot done that way, much more cheaply than more trams. Buses are a marvellously flexible transportation form if, if they have the right rules around the game, right? The right rules, and you know, the more you can make them electric, the better it is.